again this evening. And uh, thank you for tuning in. It's a blessing. The message this morning was a good message. How long is long? I hope you did watch that. And praise the Lord. We'll have a great time this evening. Thank you again once again for tuning in to this Sunday night uh, virtual service here at Foundation Baptist Church. And we will sing tonight, Praise the Savior. Praise the Savior. <laughs> Praise the Savior, he who know him, who can tell how much we owe him. Gladly let us render to him all we are and have. Jesus is the name that charms us. He for conflict fits and arms us. Nothing moves and nothing harms us while we trust in Him. Trust in Him, He sins forever. He is faithful, changing never. Neither force nor God can sever those He loves from Him. Then we shall be where we would be. Then we shall be we should be things that are not now nor could be soon shall be our own praise the lord good singing that song has a great truth in it we'll continue to sing all the way my savior leads me all the way my savior leads me all the way my savior leads me what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus do it all. continue this uh, more uh, this uh, evening service let's uh, let's uh, have a word of prayer as we continue heavenly father thank you thank you for being such a good god to us thank you lord for reaching out to us thank you god lord for using us in whatever way we you we have been used and father lord as we continue this service tonight this virtual service i pray god that those that are listening those that are hearing god I pray whatever you allow in our country and this world, I pray, Lord, that those that are homelessly, I pray you open their spiritual eyes to see God and you are calling him. Everyone you're calling God, and Lord, I pray. As this time, Lord, I pray that it will be used, Lord, for people to draw close to you, God. Lord, I pray you reach out that hand to everyone that needs you, God. Lord, forgive everyone whatever they have done and just reach out to them, God. 
I pray God that each and every person that listens to this message tonight, I pray God that they will know you as Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord, they will see their condition, that they need you. Lord, I need you, we all need you, Father. Lord, speak to us and help us, Lord, that everything we do will glorify your name, God. Bless the rest of the, the service tonight, the singing and the message, Lord. I pray you bless the man of God as he will come and preach. And I pray, Lord, your word, almighty oh, God, I am excited to hear what is it you have for us tonight. And I pray many that are home will, Lord, be looking out and be anxious and excited to hear from you tonight. Rebuke Satan from hindering the service here or in the homes of those that are listening tonight. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Let's uh, listen to the next uh, special that we have. I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> this Sunday evening service. We had a wonderful service this morning and it's great to be back tonight. This, I, today I believe is now four Sundays we have been away uh, from actually meeting in the house of God. Especially for those who are 
faithful to church and you're here every service, this is very unusual. For those who miss here and there, um, it is unusual too, but for those who are faithful, this is really strange. But you know, we're still thankful that we can still keep service like this and the Word of God can still go forth. And I know our faithful people, many of them, are praying and reading their Bibles at home and keeping their families together spiritually. And that's what's really important right now. And I'm hoping in the next month or two, all this can be resolved and we can start meeting back in the house of God. I was able to hear some uh, that some of the states in America is beginning to open up some businesses and and so on. So that's a real blessing to hear that. Uh, of course, they've been like that for at least um, over two months, three months now. So uh, they've been, they've had this virus even before we did. And, but it is a blessing to know that their doors are beginning to open up. Some of the states now, not all of America. And I'm just hoping in the next couple of months, we can begin to open up back the church doors. And we can start running those buses. People can be seated and we can sing. I'm looking forward to seeing what's the first song we're going to sing, what's the first message that's going to be preached, and how God is going to work in the hearts of people. And I hope you're looking forward for the first service also. And um, I also want to thank God for everyone who has been given to the tithes and offering and faith promise. Some people have been making contact. Some people have been trying to deposit it into the, uh, into the account. So I'm very thankful for those who are staying faithful to the Lord's work, regardless if they can't meet here or not. For those who would like to deposit it into the church bank account, it is at the Barra Bank, the Foundation Baptist Church account. The number is 4 Zero 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 three three seven slash zero zero five zero zero. All right, let's sing our next hymn right now. Praise the Lord, Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Our clean friends may prove our true. Doubts and fears assail. One still loves and cares for you. One who will not fail. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Have not heart me pass away. Come the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing 
Call for songs of loud praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I do by thy good pleasure, safely I'll arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from thee. Interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to It is. Let's get our Bibles out, please. Let's get our Bibles out. And we had a great service this morning, and we're thankful that we can be back for the evening service. Thank you for those who are uh, trying your utmost best to listen to the services and be involved in it. Also, for those who are sharing the links and trying to get people across. You know what? I, I heard. That some people, as soon as they get the message, some people are on Facebook. And as soon as they got the message and the devotions that are being sent, they have been sending that out to the, um, I, I don't know how it really works. I guess to the people who is involved in their account or what. So I am thankful that even if your family and friends on Facebook does not watch the service you're giving them an opportunity Praise to Lord. hear the word of god yeah. and their blood is now off their hand your hands you have given them an opportunity to listen to the word of god and to be able to receive christ as their savior so that's a blessing thank you for being a witness virtually <laughs> virtually and uh, let's turn please to first samuel again Chapter 7, this is the second half of the message from this morning. Uh, I preached on how long is long, and I'm preaching on the same thing tonight, uh, part 2. Uh, 4 Samuel chapter 7, uh, we'll, once again we'll read verse 1 through 6. Last uh, uh, Friday, this is a pre-recorded message, so we're recording it on Friday. So sometimes it's unusual to say uh, what happened before but uh, the service is actually being recorded on Friday and it's being uploaded and you'll be able to view it on Sunday and because it's done that way me and my family can also be a part of the service and uh, say we read our Bibles we dress just like if we're going to church everybody is dressed sharp and we meet in our living room and we listen to the service go through everything from the beginning to the end. And uh, not because I'm the pastor means, um, and I'm the one preaching means I can't. And even the men that are preaching, Brother Diane, Brother Buja, and so far, Brother Joel is going to preach this Wednesday. Um, I'm listening from the very beginning all the way to the end. And I know our faithful people are doing so also. And... Um, uh, let's not take for granted what is being offered unto you. Mm -hmm. All this will be, one day you'll stand before God. All this will be judged uh, by, uh, by God towards you. What have you done with his work? And how have you praised him? All these songs are good hymns that we can praise God. I'll talk a little bit about it tonight. Our spiritual life is so important uh, to every area of our lives. 
Um, but uh, uh, today is, fr uh, where we're recording right now is Friday, but uh, we went and did an ultrasound again today. It seems like every time we have an next child, the ultrasounds are being increased. This is now our third ultrasound, I believe. Yes, this is our third ultrasound. <laughs> With Nathaniel, it was only one. Now it's reached a tree, and before, they said before, my wife delivers, there's going to be a next one. Yes. It seems like they're putting in more tests. Um, I, I understand. I, I like it. I like to see what's going on in the process and so on. But also, it takes money to do all that. So our baby was breached at the last ultrasound, which is about maybe two months ago. But thank God, everything is okay. The baby is back in normal position. Hopefully, it's not going to be breached again by time delivery. We've had breech babies before. Emily was a breech baby and she came out the opposite direction, but everything's okay with her. Yeah. And, uh, but the, the, the uh, what's that thing called, the umbel umbilical cord? That is around the baby's neck. Um, so it, it, the ultrasound is saying it's not a problem um, to the baby right now, but still pray that that can be off. We've never had a child that the string was around its neck. So uh, pray that uh, everything can go well and the babies can be the baby can be healthy and strong. Yeah. It um, and we're looking forward to seeing. Uh, it's uh, the baby is going to be born in July, and um, so uh, I think it's about. 15 years ago, I think it's 2004, that's 16 years ago, my wife came to work in the month of July. That's the first time I met her. And then uh, we began a relationship and then things didn't work out so well spiritually between her and me. Um, I don't think I was ready to be married and I think she was ready to commit. And, um, but we separated for two years and you wouldn't believe it when we met back, we never thought we would see each other back again. Hmm. But two years later we met back and it was in the month of July yeah. also. <laughs> and yeah. uh, we got married in the month of July because of that. And um, I'm hoping the baby is not gonna be born on our anniversary because we don't want anything to take away from what we already have. Yeah. And um, so if it can be born the next day or the day before, that would be yeah. fine. Yeah. And um, we don't want to be celebrating a party on our anniversary. <laughs> um, so anyways, you pray for my wife's health and the baby's health also. Um, 1 Samuel 7 verse 1 through 6, please. At this time, let's all stand. Please don't get complacent. Wherever you are, get your Bibles open up. Let's turn to the scriptures. Leave your Bibles open there in 1 Samuel. We'll be studying this scripture here. Every other verse, I'll read it for you. Um, we'll read responsibly again like we normally do when we meet at church here. And the men of Kershat Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill. And sanctify Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. Let's read together, verse 2. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kershat Jerim that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. For then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mespain, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Let's finish off together with verse 6. And they gathered together to Mespe and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. 
and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mespin. And uh, let's have a word of prayer and uh, then we'll have a special song and then I'll preach. As I preach on how long is long the second part of the message. Father, we thank you that we can meet here this Sunday evening for service. I thank you for all those who are uh, investing and tuning in and listening and singing and getting involved in the service, gathering their families together, their spouse, their children, and their singing while Brother Diet is singing and uh, giving their offering and um, and uh, turning into the scriptures and listening intently to the word of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you're an all-powerful, all-present God. And even though your Holy Spirit is here at this service here, your Holy Spirit is also there where your people are meeting also. And I pray, Lord, as the word of God go forth, I pray it will not come back void as we trust on your word, as your, your word says so. And if there's one out there that is not saved, we pray they'll come to know you as their Savior. And I also pray for spiritual growth and revival from me to everyone else. A lot of people are falling backward spiritually. The children of God especially is falling backwards spiritually. And I pray, Lord, that they will pick up themselves. They will gather up themselves. They will get right with you, Lord. They will be involved in your work and be committed unto you. Bless, O oh Lord, and work in every mind and heart. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a special song at this moment now.
gives me rest. I seek His rest in the secret place. All right, so how long is long part two? Let me just review a little bit about what I preached on this morning. Uh, you know, in every area that God wants us to be successful, He has instructions and guidelines. You know, God promises us success in every area of our life. Amen. But He doesn't say, um, I want you to be successful in all these areas without leaving us instructions and guidelines. You know, God is a good God. Amen. And God wants good for all of us. And Amen. God wants us to be successful in every area. And so, he leaves instructions and guidelines in how to be successful. In it, it, it is his word that is the map and instruction book. If you're going to come back to God with all your hearts, then you'll find the instructions as to do so in the Bible. And that is what we're looking upon this evening. Uh, this morning, we read verse 3, which we focus on in 1 Samuel 7, verse 3. We focus on that. We said that Israel, the children of God, was away from God for over 20 years. Well, that's a long time. Some of you may not have been away from God that long. It may be a couple years. It may be a couple months. It may be a couple weeks. It may be a couple days. For some, it may be a couple hours. But the whole idea of the message is no period. It doesn't matter how long or short it may be in our eyes. No period is too long to be away from God. Folks, we cannot be away from the presence of God. Every period that we're away from God is a disaster and a danger in our lives. Okay. Here Israel has been away from God 20 or 20 years. But you know what? They're coming back to their senses now. Yeah. They're saying and they're lamenting and they're crying over God. They want to come back into the presence of God. And some of you, as you listen to the word of God this this evening, I don't want to have to go far into the message um, before the Holy Spirit already is working in your heart. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit is already revealing to you. You may not even be right with God. Right. Maybe some of you, your prayer life is not the way it once was. Or your Bible reading is not the way it, it once was. Maybe you don't feel inclined to the desires and love for the things of God like you used to be. Folks, it's by time we come back and be right with God. Amen. Return with all your hearts, children of God. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, now is the acceptable time, the Bible says. Well, when the children of God decided that they're going to come back to God, they came to Samuel and they said to Samuel, they, they began to cry out to Samuel, to God, and, uh, and they began to lament and and, and then God gives Samuel some instructions to give to the children of God in how they can return to God with all their hearts. And I'm not going to go into all the details of what I said this morning. Uh, it's now available to you on, 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 YouTube, on the YouTube channel there. You can review back that if you desire to. But Samuel gives them some instructions in verse 3. He said, there are three things you, the children of God, need to do in order to return with all your hearts to the Lord. And if you can look back there, verse 3, 1 Samuel 7, 3. And Samuel spake unto the house, unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away 
the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Notice there are three instructions Samuel gave Israel in how to return to God with all your hearts. I said this morning, it's not just about coming back to God. It's about coming back to God with all your heart. Isn't it by time we come back to God and stay with God? Amen. Instead of running back again to the world or running back to our sins. You know the Bible says? The Bible says sometimes Christians can be like a dog. It's not that God is uh, calling you a dog, but they can have the characteristics of a dog. You know sometimes a, a dog will vomit and leave that vomit on the ground. And then not too long after he comes back and licks up that same vomit. Hmm. Now human beings look at that and we think that is awful, that's disgusting, and it is. We won't do that. But you know what? Christians do that spiritually. Many times they come back to God and the vomits of life, the sins and the awfulness of their past, they leave that behind. But then they come to God and then not too long after, they go back to that same vomit of life, the awfulness, the sins. In other words, you go back and lick up all those dirty, disgusting behaviors that you once was living in before. God says we ought not to be like that. It, 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 it is by time we come back to God and stay faithful to God Amen. for the rest of our lives. But Samuel gives us um, three instructions here. He said, first of all, put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth. Secondly, he said, prepare your hearts unto the Lord. And thirdly, you see it there in verse 3? Yes, what is it? Serve him only. Now, let's look at the children of God's response to these three instructions. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. This morning, we talked about the three instructions given to the children of God and how they can return unto God with all their hearts. Now, all that was, was instructions. What we're going to see tonight is their response to their instructions. What all you heard this morning was, this is the way you can come back to God. What is waiting now is, how do you respond to that? Amen. So, it, it, it doesn't help only if you listen only. Listening is a, is a great start, yes. but it doesn't make no sense. It's not going to be you coming back to God and you being right with God if all you do is just listen. It's good to listen because now it's in your heart. Praise the Lord. Yes, but now it's time to respond to what we have heard. And tonight, well, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at how the Church of God responded to the instructions in how to return to God with all their hearts. And this is um, how they return. Look at verse 4. 1 Samuel 7, 4. This, they began to return here. This is how they respond. Verse 4. Then the children of Israel, what? Did, did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only. In verse 4, we find the children of God following the first instruction. Remember, there were three instructions in how to return back to God. The first one was to put away what? Strange gods and Ashtaroth. All right? That was the first instruction. Isn't that what we see there in verse 4? Hey, they responded. Samuel said, you want to return back to God? This is how. Put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth. And the Bible says they did it. Every man went to his house, took off all the strange gods, and got rid of it. They found that main god. Remember I said this morning, the reason why they mentioned Ashtaroth is because that was the main one. They had many other strange gods, but they had a main one. Uh, 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 one that they put more works into, Astra. They, that every husband, every father, every main member of the home went to their house, 
found all the strange gods on Ashtaroth and got rid of it. What a blessing. Amen. They responded. Folks, have you? Is there some strange things in your life? And have you responded in getting rid of them? I mean, is, is that our fulfillment? Is that what's pleasing our lives? Or is God pleasing to us? Are we living to please what we want to, to please our flesh? Or are we trying to live to please God? Now, what a blessing. Hey, have you put away the strange gods in your life? You may not have an actual idol god made with hands in, in your home, but you might have some actual things that you put in front of God right. in your life. It is by time we put it away. Did it happen? Did you respond to that instruction? If we're going to come back to God, and there are some strange things in our lives that needs to be put away. It's, we got to respond to it. Did it happen? Did you, uh, where did it take place? Did you find a spot somewhere in your home and you call an altar, maybe at your workplace or somewhere in your yard or under a tree or by your bedside? Did it happen? Was there tears involved? Was there a broken heart? As you said, God, I've been too long away from you and I'm going to put these things away because these things mean nothing to me like you mean everything to me. It didn't happen, folks. How long more will we stay in the condition that is awful and disgusting away from God? Amen. To Israel, it was too much and they had to come away from it. We can't have revival unless there is a foot in the way. Then we see in verse 4 that they serve God only. We shouldn't have to wait, folks, for the Lord's return. For the children of God's knees to bow and the children of God's tongue to confess that Jesus is God. You know, sometimes it, it amazes me that we can get a confession out of the children of God in who they believe in. Sometimes we can't see in their lives an actual belief that they live like if they believe Jesus lives. Folks, it's by time we serve God and serve God alone. I believe you can have a 12 hours or however long your job is in a day. And you can still serve God only by acknowledging God throughout that job that you do. You can be a, a person who is working at your home. Maybe you're the, you, you, uh, maybe you're the mom or, or the wife and you're working at home and you're doing all kinds of tasks at the home. But I tell you, if you acknowledge God in everything you do in the home, you're serving God only. <laughs> Instead of getting so caught up in a task where we forget that God even exists. Because we're only we're so caught up in it, and that's human nature. Eh? That's why we gotta forcefully and train ourselves by character to acknowledge God in everything that we do. Praise but what a blessing! The children of God, they they they're so anxious, they're so longing to get back with God. They put away the strange gods. They serve God only. When we come to the end of verse 4, something is missing. Wasn't there three instructions? We only saw two of the instructions followed in verse 4. Look at verse 4 again. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. Folks, which one is missing? Remember there are three instructions. Put away strange gods. Second one is what? The preparation of the heart unto the Lord. That one is missing. And the third one is serve the Lord only. So in verse 4 we see that they put away the strange gods. Praise the Lord. They responded to it. And then um, in verse 4 we saw that they served the Lord only. Praise the Lord that they did that. But verse 4 doesn't mention the point number 2. In the preparation of the heart. That one is missing. Um, the preparation of our hearts unto the Lord. Is the key to the Christian to stay in the will of God. 
and also growing in the will of God. Remember I said this morning, the preparation of the heart means that you need to prepare your heart before you come to God. Praise if you're going to come to God in prayer, you're going to have to come with a heart saying, God, my heart is ready for you to do whatever work you want to do. Amen. What is that? That's like a farmer plowing the ground before he plants the seeds. That's like a tailor before he sews that cloth into a dress. He cuts out the pattern of that cloth. And that's how we ought to be. Our hearts ought to be prepared before we come to the Lord. And if our hearts are prepared before we come to the Lord, then our hearts are now softened and, and plowed well. And the seeds of God's righteousness can now be planted into your life. And you can now blossom and grow for the Lord. Amen. See, this is really important in us staying faithful to the Lord. Uh, we didn't find that their hearts were prepared unto the Lord in verse 4. Because it is now found in verse 6. It's not that they didn't prepare their hearts unto the Lord. They did. But it's not found until we reach verse 6. We find in verse 6 four ways how the children of God prepare their hearts unto the Lord. And if we practice these four instructions, that means we can keep our hearts prepared. And if we keep our hearts prepared, God always have an open heart in his children to do his work. Amen. And what a blessing that God can look upon his children and see, look, this one's heart is open up and ready for me to work. Mm -hmm. And I see this one, and I see that one over there, and I see that one over there. But isn't it sad, Christians, that God looks at many of our hearts and it's not prepared, it's not open up. Mm -hmm. It's not open up for God to do anything much in our hearts. Isn't it by time we start preparing our hearts and keep it prepared so God can always find a ready and willing vessel to be used? Verse 6 gives us four instructions in how to keep our hearts prepared unto the Lord. It says in verse 6, if you can look at it, 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 6, turn there now. Don't just sit there or, or, or however your position you are. Maybe some of you are lying down. You're probably falling asleep already. Listen to the men. I don't know when you're listening to it. But um, don't get complacent. Turn to the scriptures and keep your Bibles open there. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 6. It says, And they gathered together to Mespe and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And fasted on that day and said, and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in mass Spain. And tonight I want to give you that four instructions mentioned here. In how we can keep our hearts prepared unto the Lord. So that we can return to the Lord and God can do a work in our hearts. Yeah. Look now at the first one. The first one is humility. Humility. Look at verse 6 again. And they gathered together to Mispe and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. Now look this way back again. Humility always comes first when we're coming to God. Praise you cannot come to God unless you're humble before God. Even if you're coming to God for salvation. If you don't have any amount of humility in your life, you can't even get saved without humbling yourself before the Lord. Humility is the key in coming to God. The act of pouring water on the ground was an acknowledgement of their utter weakness, their unworthiness, and their helplessness. You know what Paul said? Paul said, when I am weak, then am I strong. I have something here. Um, this evening. I have in my hand a vessel. 
and in this vessel is some water. In this vessel represents us. This vessel represents the Christian. Inside this vessel is water. The water represents our ways, our pride, our selfishness, right. our desire, our carnal ways. All these things are can be summed up into pride. Yes, sir. All these things builds up pride. And as long as these things are in our lives, pride will be there, and pride will keep our hearts hard. Pride will keep us away from God. Once our heart is hard, can God plant any seed of righteousness or no, godliness in our hearts? No, can he do any work in us? No. That means we've got to empty ourselves. And this is what the children of God did. The children of God came to Samuel and said, it has been too long. We've been away from God too long. And we've got to come back. We're willing to come back. We're ready to come back. And the Bible says, remember like I said this morning, they began to lament, to weep, to grieve, to mourn, to wail. And Samuel gathers all of them, gives them the instructions, tell them three things, remember? For Samuel 7, 3. And they responded to it. And now they're gathering at a place called Mispe. And Samuel said, okay, you guys are preparing your hearts unto the Lord. And everybody got a vessel. And they began to dip water from, uh, from uh, some, somewhere that they had water. They began to dip water. And the Bible says as they dipped the water, they didn't use it to drink. The Bible says they took the water and they began to pour it out before the Lord. I'm pouring it out in this pan here before it falls on the ground and then I have to mop up and all those things. <laughs> but you know what? They began to pour it out before the Lord. You know what they were, you know why they were doing that? As they took that, um, as they dipped the water and they got it into the vessel and they began to pour it out, they were saying, God, this is our life. I'm pouring my life out before you. God, I am nothing. I am unworthy. I am helpless. I, God, I humble myself before you. Folks, we can't come to God without humility. Yeah. This is what they're doing here. They are saying the act of pouring water on the ground was an acknowledgement of their utter weakness, unworthiness, and helplessness. It is by time for Christians to pour themselves out before the Lord. Folks, empty yourselves of self-confidence. Empty yourselves of arrogancy. Empty yourself of pride. Empty yourself of selfishness. Why? So that God can have you. If your vessel is empty of yourself, then he can fill your life up with his works of righteousness, his works of godliness. But you know what? Some of us, you know, we come and we empty ourselves before the Lord of pride, of selfishness, of arrogancy. But you know, we hide some of it still in our hearts. We keep some of it still there. True. And then not too long after, we still have some more. Still some more things to pour out. And then, we still keep some uh, self-righteousness in our lives. We still keep some of our confidence in our lives. Right. We still keep some of our pride in our lives. And then we want to know, you know, I'm, I'm humbling myself before the Lord. How come God is not using me? Because there's still some pride in your life. You have not emptied yourself. And you know it. Remember what I said in, in 1 Samuel 7, 3? If you're going to return unto the Lord with all your heart, it means you're going to empty your heart of your ways. Man. But some things are still in our lives. And we need to empty ourselves. 
of our selfishness and our pride and our stubbornness and our arrogancy so that God can have you as long as your vessel is filled with you your ways your pride your arrogancy your righteousness you are unprepared to receive the righteousness and the blessing and the godliness and the usage of yeah. God in your life. Yeah. If your vessel is full with you, is there space for God to pour anything else? No, sir. So we got to empty ourselves. Humility is the first thing to be learned if a child of God is to come unto God Praise and receive his blessings. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you cannot come to God without humility. You see, verse 4 tells us that they put away the strange gods and they serve God only. But then verse 6 began to explain to how they prepare their hearts unto the Lord. Folks, if we can keep our hearts prepared, open up, always plowed, that means God can always, every time we pray, every time we do something for God, God has a, an open heart so you can plant his seeds of righteousness and godliness and works in our lives and he can use us secondly so the first thing we saw is that they humble themselves before the Lord the second thing they did to keep their hearts prepared unto the Lord was that they fasted look back again at verse 6 and they gathered together to Mespe and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and what? And fasted on that day. You know, humility and fasting goes together. You fast, humility is humbling ourselves before God, emptying ourselves of pride and stubbornness and arrogancy. But fasting also humbles us. Fasting increases the strength of our humility. But you know, fasting doesn't ever go by itself. Fasting always have a twin brother. And his name is called prayer. Amen. Every time you see the word fasting in the Bible, prayer always goes along with it. And uh, the Bible says, they were lamenting, they were weeping, they were wailing, they were crying out unto the Lord. What's all that? All that is other terms mean prayer. They were fasting and they were praying uh, unto the Lord. So we saw that they humbled themselves and now they're fasting unto the Lord. Food. When I say fasting, I mean the uh, the abstaining from food. We're not talking about abstaining from a category in the food group. But we're talking about abstaining from food completely. Some people believe I can stay away from meat. And that's called fasting. That's not true. The word fasting means to completely stay away from food. And here the Bible says they're staying away from food. What does food do? Food makes the body full and strong, but also encourages our will to be full and strong. Yeah. In fasting, we need to deprive the body of its will. You know, God made the body to have a will. The body's will is to eat. We need to eat. If we don't eat, we will die. Right. Now, we need to eat, and we need to eat food, and, and, and drink things, and during eating that food, and drinking those drinks, or juices, or water, it feeds our body nutrients, so that we can be strong and healthy. That is the body's will. The body's will is, my main will is to eat. To be full, to be strong. Do you know if you eat and you don't eat enough food, that body tells you that? Your body tells you that. Right. Yeah, how do you know if you eat enough or not? Sometimes people grab a plate of food and they eat. Now, a plate of food fills me up. But some people, they eat too. 
But how do they know they're supposed to eat two plates? Mm -hmm. Their body tells them, I'm not full. True. I need some more. Feed me, feed me. And you know, when you're full, how do you know you're full? Mm -hmm. Is there a, a, a measuring stick in your body? Yes, there is. Your body tells, your stomach tells your body, hold on. No more food now. Stay away. If you eat more, you're going to get some stomach aches or even um, some vomiting taking place. So your body controls that will to tell you to eat or not to eat, how much to eat, what to eat. God comes around and starts saying now, I just don't want you to feed the body. When you feed the body, you feed your will. You feed your desires. God comes around and he says, it is okay to stay away from food for periods of time. And he calls it fasting. He says you can stay away from food for such and such days. Jesus even fasted for 40 days. That tells us that there is a period of time you can fast and you will not die. God did not make your body to stay away from a meal or stay a day from food and you're going to fall down and die. God didn't make you like that. God made you so that your body can live after Him, yeah. not after food. Now, you know, when man talks about the Trinity of himself, he always says it's the body, the soul, and the spirit. You ever hear about that? The Trinity of man. A body, a soul, the soul is what is, is, is me trying to talk to you. The communication between people. The body is the outer shell that you see. Then the Bible talks about the man has a third part, a spirit. God is a triune God also. And he's, he's called the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it's not that he has three different parts. They're three, but they're one. Each one of them is all powerful. And um, just like God is a triune God, man is a triune being. A body, a soul, and a spirit. Every time man talks about his triune parts, he always starts with body, soul, and spirit. But you know, in the Bible, every time God mentions the triune part of man, he never starts with the body. Man starts with the body. Body, soul, spirit. But when God talks about the triune part of man, he always starts out by saying spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know who I heard this from or if I read it or heard it from somebody. They say it doesn't matter how healthy or unhealthy a person is. As long if they get, sorry, if, they, if it doesn't matter how healthy or unhealthy they are, as long as their spirit is strong, even if they get sick or they get a serious injuries, the greater chances of them living is stronger as long as their spirit is strong. Why did they say that? You know, some people, and, and there's things that they've studied, you know, there are people who are healthy, strong, muscular, body, and they get sick or they get a serious injury, and but their spirit is not strong, and they get rushed to the hospital and they die. But as a person can be weak in its body, and they can get a sickness or get a, a, a or a serious injury. But if their spirit is strong, they will live. Yeah. Why did God say feed the spirit first, then the soul, then the body? Because the spirit, if it's fed and it's stronger, it can keep the soul right. It can keep the body strong, no matter what sickness or injury may come towards you. So God says, feed my spirit. But what does man want to do? Man wants to feed the body. Do you see, as soon as this pandemic came upon this country and upon the world, what did man rush to buy for us? 
Food. Amen. Food began to, the shelves of the supermarkets began to empty out. People made sure that their cupboards were full. And I'm not saying that was wrong. But I also believe there is something called contentiveness. Right. And there's also something called greediness. Right. Some people took so much of something that they really don't even need. Come on. And there are other people who are left without. That, that, that was not right. There are some people who've had things in their cupboards for months. Hmm. They've not used. Right. It's just because of greed. Yes, sir. But anyways, um, what, what's wrong? Man is always trying to feed the body. Force. And because man is always constantly feeding the body force, guess what grows for, uh, stronger? Or pride. Mm -hmm. Or arrogancy. Or behavior. Check. People are home uh, much more now. Mm -hmm. Check. Check their behaviors at home. Check how they're handling themselves at home. People are, the home life now has escalated even worse than when people are hardly at home. Why? People are home and they're feeding the body, but they're not feeding the spirit. And because the body is being fed, they're full, they have full meals, their cupboards are full, but their spiritual life is empty. So they're behaving still rough and arrogant and prideful and uh, the, the behaviors towards each other is terrible because the body is being fed but the soul is not being taken care of. So the soul is what communicates with people. So if all you're feeding is the body, the next thing that's going to be affected is your soul. So your relationship with your family and the people of God has gone haywire. It's gone in a chaotic mode. The spirit is left dead. People are not even watching the services. Hmm, uh, Sunday, when you should have been, but normally on Sunday, you should be in church. Now, Sunday, 10 o'clock, just because you know you can watch the service anytime you want. And nobody knows if you're watching it at 10 or not. Hmm. You just watch it any hour you want to. Come on. You're running out of skin. What's happening? Your body is being fed. Your soul is out of order now. Check your behaviors towards each other. And your spiritual life is getting out of order. Some of you need to return to the Lord. So why did God say? Why did God say feed the spirit force? You feed that spirit. You feed that spiritual life. And you said, preacher, how do I feed that spiritual life? Fast. And pray. Amen. When you fast and pray, you're depriving your body of its fullness, of its will, of its uh, arrogancy, of its pride. And you're building the spiritual life. You get that spiritual life built. Guess what's going to be strong? Your soul. Your communication with your spouse. Your communication with your children will be peaceful, happy, joyful. No matter how long they're in front of your face, no matter what they're doing in the house, your behaviors will be okay. Then your body will be strong, will be healthy. Even if you get sick, you have a spirit to live. Your spiritual life is strong. Even if you get sick, the chances of you living will be greater. You check in the Bible. People who have a weak spirit, even if they're strong, will die because their spiritual life is weak. If you check our people on Tuesday nights did a study. In chapter 4 of 4 Samuel, there is a woman that had a child during some difficult, chaotic time. The Ark of the Covenant for the first time was stolen. The high priest was dead. Eli, Hophni, and Phineas were killed in the battle. And uh, the wife, one of the ladies, had a child around that period because of all the problems, pain began to come into her womb. And she got brought forth a child. And because her spiritual life was so weak, she delivered a child, and not long after she died. The spiritual life has got to be strong no matter what comes and hits you. 
If your spiritual life is strong, you are going to make it. Amen. You're going to have peace in your home, Amen. joy in your home. Why? The spiritual life that's been worked on is keeping that heart open. God is looking down at his children and saying, Now, I see some willing vessel. I can plant the fruit of the Holy Spirit in that one's heart. And I can plant godliness in this one, and righteousness in this one, peace in this one, joy in this one, faith in this one. God is looking around at his children in a chaotic period of time. And many of his children's heart is hard. Preacher. They're full of themselves of food and carnal ways instead of spiritual ways. Thirdly, so we see first humility. Then we saw confession, uh, uh, fasting. Thirdly, we saw confession. Look at verse 6 again. And they gathered together to Mess Bay and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. Humility is what we need first before we can come to God. Fasting is the rocket booster to help us humble ourselves. But now we come to confession. Confession is actually what it means. Confession means to come to a holy God and say, God, this is what wrong I have done. Please forgive me and help me not to do it again. Every time I come to God in confession, I begin to list my sins. I said, God, I have sinned in this area. Forgive me. And God, give me strength or wisdom or whatever help I may need to overcome that sin and so that I don't fall back into that sin. What am I doing? I'm confessing my sins. Confession means naming the sin. Um, bring it into light. It means we can't say, God, please forgive me for all my sins I did today. That's not what it means. It means naming your sins. Confession. What you've done, you begin to name it. Now I understand there are some things you might not remember. That's why we say, God, forgive me for all known and unknown sins also. But there are some things you've done. Yes, sir. That you're very much aware of. Amen. We come to God and we confess those sins. But we need to ask God to forgive us. God, forgive me for I've sinned against a holy God. But God, also help me not to commit this sin again. Give me wisdom in it. Give me strength in it. You know, we just can't just say, God, forgive me. And then ask God for help to overcome it. We need to confess our sins. Confession of our sins can take such a toll upon our lives. Satan makes confession like a heavy duty work in our lives. He makes it like the worst thing in our life. You know, you know what it means to come to God every day sometimes with the same sins? Hmm. It, it, Satan begins to prone in our hearts and our minds. How can you go to God again about that same sin? You think he's really going to forgive you? Huh. You know what Satan is trying to do? Exactly who he's called. He's trying to deceive you. He's trying to trick you because that's who he is. He's a deceiver. He's a trickster. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to get you to come into a state where you're feeling I can't go to God again about this same sin. I can't ask God to forgive me. How much more times will I come to God? And we feel, we start feeling guilty of not coming to God about our sins. And now we're not coming to God at all. We're not confessing our sins. So guess what? Satan has you the exact spot. Hmm. Now your sins are beginning to multiply and grow. And it begins to weigh down your body and your life. It's beginning to pull you away from God. Because God is a holy God. Right. And God cannot work through and use and bless people who are living in sin. God is only going to work through holy people of God. <coughs> so we need to come to God. Uh, don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him trick you. 
We ought to rejoice as Christians to know that as a child of God, we can come anytime and as much times and confess and forsake our sins sincerely. And God is going to forgive us. Confession, you know what it does? It clears the path, the paths of any particles that God cannot stand and see so that he can do a work in our lives. Confession is like a farmer. He's plowing his bed. But in the line of plowing his bed, there's a big root. So he goes. He doesn't plow around the root, does he? He goes and he plows out that root. And he yeah. digs it up and he pulls it away. And he casts it away. Man. So he continues in that straight line of that bed. You ever seen it before? You see sometimes videos or sometimes you've been on a plane before. You see big farms and it's all neat and straight. But a farmer knows the task can work. He went through to keep that bed straight. Folks, confession keeps your life straight. It keeps your life clear of particles so that God can work. Number one, we saw humility. If we're going to return to God with all our hearts, we're going to humble ourselves before God. We're going to have to fast before God. We're going to have to confess our sins. And lastly, we saw judgment. Look back again at verse 6. And they got it together to mess play and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in mess play. This is where Samuel leads the children of God and teaches them the word of God. The word judgment there is another word that can refer to the Bible. If you read Psalm uh, chapter 19 or the whole book of Psalm, especially chapter 19 and chapter 119, God uses several terms to refer to his word. He uses the word like statutes. Or commandments or fear of the Lord and he also uses the word judgment here Samuel uses the word judgment and what is he really doing what is Samuel gathering all the people together to do to teach them the Word of God and if, if we want to keep our hearts prepared unto the Lord we will need to be under the preaching of God's word. Yeah. We will need to humble, humbly listen to the ways and guidelines of God's word. Folks, if we're going to humble ourselves before God, it's going to keep our hearts open up. If we're going to fast, if we're going to confess our sins, it's going to keep that heart constantly open up so God can work. But folks, we've got to know the ways of God. Yes, sir. We've got to know how God works. We've got to know his guidelines. We've got to know his word. And that's what preaching does. That's what reading the Bible does. That's what memorizing the verses in the Bible does. That's what meditation on the word of God does. What it does, it teaches us the word of God. So they can grow in our hearts. So we can know the ways of God. So we can always keep our lives straight and holy and righteous and humble before the Lord. Um, we will need to humbly listen to the ways and guidelines of God's word. And let it teach you to stay close to God. You know what the Bible tells us in Psalm? It tells us a great peace. And they who love thy law and nothing shall offend them. You know, as Samuel began to teach them the word of God, you know, it's very hard for them to fall away if people know the word of God and they're trying to keep it. And here the Bible says, if we love God's word, we love listening to it. We love learning it. We love following it. We love keeping it. God says, nothing out there can offend you. Man. You'll be strong. Your heart will be open up. And God will be able to look down and look at our hearts and say, this is truly a willing vessel I can work in and use. Christians who are humble before the Lord will listen 
with an open heart to receive God's instructions and be ready to obey what he says. You know, we can have hundreds of people coming back to church when, when the doors open up. But folks, if we have hundreds of people in church, back again, and some of their hearts are hard, it's not prepared, no matter what message is preached, the seed can plant into their hearts. Okay. God's word can plant. But we can have some people, they're humbling themselves before the Lord, they're working on that. They're fasting unto the Lord, they're confessing daily or constantly about their sins, and they're listening. They have, an, they have a heart, they have a desire to listen, to learn, to keep God's word. I tell you what, there will be some vessels that will come to church in the next couple of months. The hearts will be opened up so God can work in their hearts. Right. Maybe we don't have to wait till then. Maybe we can have our heart opened up right now. That no matter what message is preached, your, the, your heart will be opened up to receive his word. You can still grow wherever you are right now. And God can still work. So we saw four things tonight on how to prepare our hearts before the Lord and keep it that way. Humility, fasting, confession, and judgment. God said, these four things done will keep your heart prepared for me to do my work. Folks, isn't it time we come back to God with all our hearts? Amen. And, and, and to keep our lives faithful to God? How long has it been since you've been away from God? How long more will you spend in this condition? When will you lament? When will you follow the instructions? How are you doing on trying to keep your heart open up and prepared for God to work? Folks, how long is long? No period of time should be spent away from our God. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer at this moment. Father, I thank you for the word of God. And now I pray you bless the invitation of everyone as they respond to the message here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, you can look this way, please. Maybe you're somebody out there who's listening and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Hey, why don't you humbly go to God right where you are. Confess the sins you have committed. Realize that there is a hell for your sin. Realize that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again. And accept him as your savior. And right where you are, you can go to the Lord and pray and ask him to become your savior and God will save you. Give us a call after you do that. And we'll have some Bible verses for you to read. We'll have some guidelines for how you to follow, what you need to do next. The number is 216-6920. And for those who are Christians and you're listening to the word of God, as we close off our broadcast, why don't you find a spot right where you are or somewhere private and go to the Lord and ask him to help you with humility, fasting, with confession, with judgment. Maybe it's time you start coming back to God. Maybe there's some things you need to work out in your life. As you heard the word of God and as the Holy Spirit worked in your heart, why don't you go to the Lord right where you are as soon as we close off and pray and meet with the Lord. But folks, thank you for joining us tonight. This Wednesday night, Joel Raham will be preaching. We look forward to having you join all of us virtually to be a part of our Wednesday night service. Thank you for being a part of our service this morning and tonight. Have a good evening. God bless you.